So earlier this week, I looked at an approach to distributed locks in which a process could open up a distributed lock for synchronizing the execution of code. And then part of the execution of that code would be the explicit invocation of this extend lock function, which would extend the TTL or the time to live of the underlying Redis key. And the the uh, idea here is to keep the TTL of the Redis key that represents the dynamic distributed lock very short, such that if the process were to crash, the underlying Redis key would expire in a reasonable amount of time, returning the system to a valid state. Now, after I had posted this, Yan Sadivi, who is the lead engineer on our freehand product, said that he uses a similar approach, except he touches the TTL using a background thread. And I thought this was really clever, so I wanted to try it out for myself. So if we jump over to a new example, here you can see we have the same kind of idea. I have a function that takes the name of the distributed lock and an operator, and the operator encapsulates the code that we want to synchronize across all of our cold fusion pods. But you'll notice that this one does not have that extend lock function. It just has the synchronized code the TTL is being managed now at a lower level inside the distributed lock itself. And we can see that in a second. And if we just jump down to this synchronize across nodes, what you can see is that it's creating a new distributed lock. It's passing in the Redis connection pool so that it can manage that under the hood, the lock name, it's obtaining the lock, it's executing the synchronized code. That's the operation that we passed in. That's that closure from above. And then finally, when that's done, it releases the distributed lock. Now, what we can do is look in Redis directly at this key and we can look at the TTL. So if we jump over here and we hit TTL, you can see it's a negative two because the key doesn't exist. However, if we jump over into our browser and we refresh, you can see it's now running. And if we jump over here, you can see it's TTL 57, 55. And now you can see it's jumped back up to 59. So that TTL is gonna start getting refreshed See, it gets to about 55 and it jumps up to 59. And there we go again, 59. And negative two. So the process has finished. And if we jump over here, we can see that in fact, it took about 20 seconds, which is exactly what we'd expect from the fact that we have a 20 second sleep inside of our quote unquote synchronized code. So how is this distributed lock achieving this behind the scenes TTL. It's using a CF thread tag to spawn an asynchronous thread. So let's jump into our distributed lock object. We pass in the Redis connection pool, the name of the distributed lock. Then we're storing this thing called the TTL thread ID, and that's gonna be the name of the asynchronous CF thread tag that we're executing in the background. And this TTL delta in seconds is essentially what we're going to set the TTL for the, uh, we're, this is, a, we're going to periodically touch the TTL of the underlying Redis key and set it to be 60 seconds in the future. And that's what this TTL in seconds represents. So if we jump down to the get method, which is if we jump back over here, you can see that's what we call to obtain the distributed lock before we actually operate our func um, execute our operator. The get method, does a few things. First, it tries to set a key into the Redis database using the NX, which means only set it if it doesn't exist, and the EX, which means that if it if it does get set, include this TTL in seconds. So when we first try to set the Redis key, we're gonna set it only if it doesn't exist, and if it doesn't exist, we're gonna set it with a 60 second, right, 60 second TTL. So at this point, if we get this far, it means that we've obtained the lock by setting the Redis key under the hood with an initial TTL time to live of 60 seconds. Now we have to go about spawning our asynchronous thread that updates that 60 second TTL on an ongoing basis through the duration of the synchronized code execution. So we're gonna create a TTL thread ID. And again, this is a variables scoped value and we have to make it unique in case we need to open this distributed lock multiple times within the same request. They have to have request level uniqueness to them. And we're gonna open up that CF thread, that asynchronous uh, processing. We're gonna pass in the name of the thread ID that we just generated. 
Now the internal logic of the CF thread tag is actually pretty straightforward. It's just a while loop, and what we're going to do is loop while the passed in thread ID matches the thread ID stored at the variable scope of the component. So while we're holding open the distributed lock, we're going to keep looping, and inside of this loop we're going to try to update the expire at to 60 seconds in the future and then sleep for five seconds. So this asynchronous thread is essentially a while loop that runs every five seconds, if depending on how you squint, and updates that expire at. This Redis expire at will return a Boolean false if the underlying key has already expired or been removed, and at that point it just quietly exits out of the execution. And of course, if at any point the thread ID stored at the top level no longer matches the thread ID that was passed in, that while loop fails, and the CF thread tag quietly ex uh, exits as well. And at this point, we have our distributed lock, we've obtained the underlying Redis key, and we've spawned the asynchronous thread that is touching the TTL in the background every five seconds. So we then execute our synchronized code and in the finally block here, you can see we call release. And the release function is super simple. All it does is clear that thread ID and delete the underlying Redis key. Now remember, clearing the thread ID will now make sure that this while statement no longer holds true because inside the CF thread, this, this thread ID refers to this value and in the release, we set this equal to the empty string. So once we release the distributed lock, this while loop is no longer going to be true, which means that the CF thread tag now just exit out quietly. Now you could say, well, why don't you just call something like thread terminate on this thread ID? And the reason I didn't want to do that is because inside of our CF thread tag, we are interacting with Redis. And by interacting with Redis, we have to take a connection out of the Redis connection pool and use it to talk to the underlying Redis key. And my concern was I didn't want to terminate in the middle of a Redis operation. I didn't know if that would corrupt the Redis connection. I'm not really sure about how very low level threading works. So to me, it feels safer to just let the thread exit out quietly once that while loop fails. And there you go. So again, we have our synchronize across nodes, takes the name of the distributed lock, takes the operation to synchronize, and then this code can now execute having no understanding of the fact that it has been synchronized across cold fusion pods. And the failure modes in this case tend to just leave a Redis key in place for less than 60 seconds, at which point it will expire naturally. Now, so if we just look at the get, we can let's take a look at the failure modes. So let's say we call the get and the Redis key exists. So this throws an error. Well, at this point we have no Redis key generated by this request and we have no thread. Okay, so let's say we're able to obtain the underlying Redis key. So we have the distributed lock, but now let's say that we've exhausted our thread pool in cold fusion and this throws an error that it's unable to spawn a child process. Well, in that case, that error is going to bubble up into the calling context. We're going to release the distributed lock, which means that worst case scenario, everything fails, we release the distributed lock. Now, let's say that we get to this point, the CF thread fails to spawn, it throws an error. Now, this try catch catches that error, goes to release the distributed lock, and then at this point we go to delete the Redis key. Now let's say that this call actually fails. So in that case, we never delete the underlying key, but if we look at where it was set originally, it only has a TTL of 60 seconds. So at that point, the system's in an invalid state, meaning the distributed lock's being held open, but there's nothing actually consuming the distributed lock on the cold fusion side. Well, this key is going to naturally now expire and be expunged from the Redis database after 60 seconds, thereby quickly, more or less, returning the system to a valid state, allowing other processes to now obtain that distributed lock.
All right, so that's one failure mode. Another failure mode would be we've obtained the lock, we've spawned the thread, now we're in this while loop in which we're trying to incrementally update the expires at every five seconds. Well, let's say that we're unable to connect to Redis at this point. Well, in this case, we're just gonna try catch and swallow that error and log it in the background, which means that we'll sleep for five seconds, wake up, then try to hit Redis again, which means that if we consider that we have a 60 second TTL more or less running on this Redis key, we have 60 seconds for this while loop to be able to connect to the Redis database, which means that even if there is an, inter, an interim blip on the connections, hopefully within 60 seconds, that should be able to work itself out. Now here's the real failure case that I haven't accounted for in the code. If this while loop cannot connect to Redis within the 60 second TTL, then what that means is that this thread is going to self terminate. It's going to exit out quietly and the Redis key underlying is going to probably expire, which means that that Redis key is going to be deleted, uh, which means that for all intents and purposes, there is no longer a distributed lock. However, since no error was thrown, this calling context is still executing, thinking that it has the distributed lock but it no longer has the distributed lock because that Redis key expired. So that's a pretty, uh, that's an edge case I don't know how to deal with. We could increase the duration of the underlying Redis key from 60 seconds to maybe something like five minutes. That makes it less responsive to failure modes, but maybe more resilient to some of the failure modes as well. Um, the other thing to consider is that CF thread execution is controlled by the request timeout settings of the parent page. So if this operator was going to run beyond the scope of the current request, we would either have to update the request timeout settings to allow the underlying CF thread to execute for a longer period of time, or we could do some interesting things like call this thread recursively such that one thread spawns another thread, which spawns another thread on some periodic basis, and therefore we can get around the request timeout constraints. But for the most part, I think this is a pretty clever approach from Jan and, uh, and does I, you know, make the calling context a lot simpler because now the synchronized code doesn't have to know anything about the underlying Redis key for the most part. Um, and I think we've hedged against a lot of our failure modes. But clearly, there are still failure modes, which means that distributed locks are just complicated and should probably be avoided as much as possible. But in instances where they have to be used, I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying this approach and I think I can use this to simplify some of my distributed lock implementations in ColdFusion or Lucy CFML specifically in my case.